Well, welcome to Griffith University and welcome to 1251 EDN, Understanding Information and Communication Technologies for Teaching and Learning. And in this course, we're going to be exploring all the different ways you can improve your learning through the use of educational technologies. Now, my name is Dr. Jason Zagami, and I'm going to be your lecturer for this course. But first, let's start by looking at some of the technologies we're going to be using for your learning from the university website. Go into Current Students and find Learning at Griffith. This is our Blackboard or Online Learning Management System that we call Learning at Griffith. And here on the right will be your courses. So here I see 1251 EDN. And clicking on that takes you into the Learning at Griffith course website. Now you may have a login process to go through, but this is your university log, um, formal um, course website. And this is where your assessment will be, where you'll upload assessment, and where you'll be able to check on how you've gone on your assessment. Other than that, we mostly use it for announcements, and any particular announcements I need to make to you, I will post, but this will also go out by email to your university email address. Now if you've actually not checking your university email address regularly and you're using your own, then I strongly suggest that you go into your university um, Gmail account, of course we use Google um, Gmail, and set up a forwarding so that any messages sent to your university email will also go to your personal email that you check regularly. So, that's for common announcements. Then there's a series of tasks that you sh need to do during the course. Quite a few of them, but they are a bit repetitive. Um, and as you do them, you can click on that and you can indicate whether or not you've started the task and when you've completed the task. And I can go in and check that and monitor your progress as you're going through the various tasks involved in the course. To the right of that is our calendar. And this lists the various activities. The main ones are our whole course discussions each week. And they occur on Wednesdays from 10 to 12. Then there are some special events such as our PD day, our on-campus workshops, and things like that. Um, relatively soon now, probably next week, we'll be, I'll add the assessment items and they'll be populated in there so that as you um, can see that in your calendar as well. Um, with the assessment items, they'll also come down on your to-do list and your alerts, letting you know when they're coming up and prompting you to get them done on time. Now, we also have the whole the course discussion forum. This is where we can talk to each other. Here we have our student introductions, where I'd like each of you to introduce yourselves. We've got three there completed already, or well, two. And very simply, let's say you can go in and look at the message. Not the easiest um, environment, but it's the one the university provides us. You see the name and the attachment, in this case the photos that they've attached. And if you wish, you can rate them and give you an indication of how well you thought of the message. Now, one other thing, though, that's important when we look at the course discussions. I'll just go all the way back. If you go into one of these, you can also subscribe. Now, I've currently already subscribed, so it's, it's listing unsubscribe. But if you click on subscribe, then anyone that posts a message into the course discussion into that particular forum will be emailed out to you. So you don't have to come in and check this web page. If you are using the web page, you can see which posts are unread. So I can see I've got no unread posts in the for this one and one for this one. Um, so I encourage you to subscribe to our two forums that exist at the moment. So the student introduction and the general course discussion forum. Now, if you have questions that you are thinking of emailing me, please post them to the general course discussion forum instead. I will eventually get around to e uh, responding to e emails, but I will respond to course discussion forums questions 
much more quickly and in much more depth. So that encourages you to post to the general course discussion and that then allows the responses to be seen by other students and share that knowledge around rather than just having it going backwards and forwards between yourself and myself. You can also ask questions of other students, um, ask questions about the topics and the content that we're discussing and generate discussions in there. But it is facilitated by enrolling in the discussion thread or subscribing to the discussion thread so that you can just do it by email rather than having to come into the actual page. Now, other things we have are the task, the calendar, the assessment, your my mark, oh, sorry, your my marks, you won't see the assessment. Um, you'll have my marks where you can check on your marks as you go through the course. You'll have the course profile and staff information, which is just contact details for myself. Now we also have a course website. This is where I place the information for the course and it's basically just one page and each week I archive that into the past weeks and there'll be different information on the front page. Often fairly similar but subtly and importantly different. Now each week there'll be a course uh, um, one or two videos to watch and these are summaries of the one or two texts that you should be reading. So the videos are simply summaries. It's important to actually read and engage with and study the material that is sent, that is, is assigned each week. And I provided you with various ways of engaging with that material. If you have an iBook or a Macintosh computer with the iBook viewer installed, you can download and use the iBook version. Otherwise, you can download the PDF and view that on screen. Or there's a flip version of the PDF as well, which lets you see that on the screen in a slightly more engaging way. So here's the flipboard version, and you can flip through the pages somewhat like a more traditional book. And jump ahead and so forth. Now the PDF version is simply a series of pages and if you don't mind destroying the environment and killing us all, you can print that out. Otherwise, you can always read it on the screen. And we'll go through that in a moment when we discuss what's involved in the course. Hopefully you've all read it by now. So, back to our web page. So, each week there'll be the material to read and study and the video um, summaries of that material, which is what you're viewing at the very moment. A video summary of our Understanding Information Technology, Information and Communication Technologies Teaching and Learning course introduction. Now, after you've studied those, and you should complete the study of those by Wednesday morning of each week, I will be trying to get each of these up by Monday, so sometimes earlier, uh, but generally you'll always have these available by the Monday and you should have studied them by the Wednesday. Then on Wednesday from 10 to 12 we have our whole course discussion where we discuss what you've read and engage with the material and explore it in greater depth. Now this is using a technology called Google Hangouts where we have a panel and the rest of you will ask questions of that panel. So I'll just show you an example of the panel. So here's one. Yeah, uh, I can start putting the, stuff, the work into the, work into the classroom and using App Inventor and, and doing it. But actually went back and was so excited that it took all of their all of the teachers in their network. In so here you'll see there's ten people involved in the panel, and the person speaking at any particular time is in the main viewer. But that's what we're going to be using as our main forum. If you click on it at the moment, it will show you when the next session's coming up in one day, 19 hours, 55 minutes, and zero seconds. So, there's around about, well, between 26 and 30 of you can keep enrolling, so we're making that a little bit flexible at the moment. Um, 
and each week we can have up to nine of you on the panel. So over the 12 or the nine, nine weeks of the course, you're going to have several opportunities to be on the panel. And it's a good idea to get some of those opportunities out of the way early. Now, being on the panel can count towards your assessment as a bit of an additional incentive. And I'll talk about that when we get to the assessment section. So to sign up, you need to click on the link down below here. That will bring up a spreadsheet and you simply put your name and your Gmail enabled account or Google Plus enabled Gmail account email address into the cell. You don't need to save it, it'll all save automatically. Um, just be careful, it is possible for two people to be editing at exactly the same time, so just wait a, um, 30 seconds or so just to make sure no one's overwritten your entry and you should be fine. So, you need to create a Google Plus account and unfortunately you can't use the university um, Gmail or email account because the university hasn't enabled Google Plus for our Gmail at the moment. So you will either need to use your own personal Gmail account or simply create a new one, which is a very simple process. Just go into Google, put in Gmail, um, and go through the process of creating an account and in the top left hand corner of your Gmail it'll ask whether or not there'll be a Google Plus button or somewhere on the top screen there'll be a Google a G plus or Google plus or your name plus um, click on that and it will um, prompt you to enable Google plus and then you'll have access to all the various options and additional capabilities that that entails um, so just to quickly show you so here along the top of my Gmail I see my plus JSON I click on that it takes me into Google plus um, the various things I've subscribed to. Here under Home I can see the Hangouts and if I go into there I can create my own Hangouts and view ones that are coming up etc. Um, if you go into Events it will show the ones that you've subscribed to that will be coming up. You can subscribe to but you don't have to in this case. Um, there will be other processes for joining the Google Plus. Now on if you are on the panel, um, you do need to have your Gmail or Google Plus page open um, at the time of our discussion, our whole group discussion, so Wednesday morning at 10, or generally about half an hour before. Um, so I like to sort of get the panel warmed up before we start the actual broadcast for everyone else. And you'll receive an invite that I'll send to you based upon the G Plus Gmail that you've included on the spreadsheet. Now, I'll talk people through that for those that sign up and make sure you're familiar with that process before Wednesday morning. But please sign up so that we make sure we have the full panel. Otherwise, I'll need to start assigning people and doing it that way through a roster system. Okay, now for Monday of this week, um, so you either know about this already or you're watching this just before it begins. Um, there's going to be a drop-in session from 4 to 5 in G30 where I'll take students through who are very unfamiliar with um, Google and the university website and Gmail and learning at Griffith and just take you through the basics of signing into some things and getting stuff set up. Um, so it's very introductory materials, very similar to what I've got here on the videos. Um, so you only need to come to that if you really have to. Uh, I'm offering that to all of my courses, so if everyone turns up it'll be rather crowded, but we'll still cope if, if people need that support. So that's the main course website. Uh, we mostly use it to get access to your video each week, your readings, and the whole group discussion. Now, let's go and have a look at what's in the readings for this week, or at least the first one. Uh, where am I? Here we are. Okay, so it goes through a little bit of an introduction there. You can read all that yourself. A bit of copyright information. Some basics of the course. So what does this course involve? It's basically about preparing you 
to become an effective teacher who can use ICT, which is Information and Communication Technologies, to enhance your teaching and your students' learning. You're going to create an ePortfolio um, so that you can use that because that's an important aspect of uh, applying for some positions in some schools, having a portfolio of your work that you can show. And you're going to learn about some things to do with our national standards for graduate teachers and basically learn about what's possible with computers in education. Not so much about teaching students, although we'll do a little bit of that. This is more about yourself and about how you can use computers more effectively to teach with. Um, we will touch on the new digital technologies curriculum and the ICT general capabilities of the Australian curriculum. And these are the aspects that involve what your students need to learn and obviously then how, how and what you need to teach them. But the main part of this course is about helping you get to grips with the use of technology and in particular we call it educational technologies so that you can be a more effective teacher. So how are we going to do that? We've got our weekly video presentations as I've already mentioned and there's various ways you can engage with that. This fundamentally replaces the traditional lecture. So instead of having to come along and pretend you're paying attention while you check your Facebook, um, you can watch the videos when it best suits you and where it best suits you and indeed with who it best suits you. So if you really wish to come on campus and gather together in a group, there are plenty of study spaces in the library and common areas where you can gather, um, have a laptop and collectively watch the presentations, take notes, discuss things together and engage with the material in that way. Or you don't have to do that on campus. You could do it at one of your homes or off, off campus somewhere on the beach if your laptop can survive that area. Um, so wherever you wish, you can gather together, watch the videos, um, look at the document, uh, the textbook material and discuss that. You could even watch it online. So you could gather together and you could use Google Hangouts and up to 10 of you could meet online. You can play the video within Google Hangouts and discuss that um, it, as a video conference. And of course some of you may wish to do it individually where you simply watch the videos at your own time, whatever place you wish, and take your own notes and prepare for our whole course discussion um, on Wednesday mornings. Now on Wednesday, we have our live on -cour online course discussion. So using Google Hangouts, the video conferencing, we'll have our panel of nine students and myself, most of the time, sometimes I'll bring in some guest lectures, and the rest of you will ask questions. So on the YouTube channel or the Google Plus channel as you're watching it, there'll also be a panel where you can um, type in questions for us to see and we will then respond to those questions during our discussion of the course material for the week. So those on panel do need to make sure have, that you've read the actual course material. Of course we will be discussing that. Um, but the rest of you can simply ask questions based upon the notes you've taken during your reading during the week. Okay, some other things. Um, the digital text, as I mentioned, each week I provide you with one or two digital textbooks that you can refer to um, to go into greater detail. And they'll often include video links and um, other links. The main content is in the text of the textbook, but some of the video links are certainly um, supportive of that material. And there are other links in case some of you wish to go into more depth and detail into the concepts that we're studying. Talked about the drop-in session. Now in week three, I've arranged for a local conference being held at a school a couple of hundred meters um, towards the beach. Um, what's it called again? That's Musgrave Hill State School. And on Saturday from 10 to 2.30, well it might be a little bit later now, I think, I think they've extended it to 3, um, there's a little conference where you can come along and see some keynote speakers um, and a number of other sessions to do with various activities. So if you follow the link, it'll take you to more details about that. It is optional, there is a small charge that, to cover the lunch, etc. But 
it can also count towards your assessment if you wish. Now in week four, we're going to have an on-campus workshop where you come onto campus and in the G31 building, um, we're going to have a session where we're going to explore 3D printing, programming, um, some robotics, and some electronic Makey Makey kits. So it's going to be a fun, engaging day, and you would have um, signed up for that when you enrolled in the course. Um, that would be the details in your enrollment. So if you check back there, there's details of the room and where it is. So forth. Um, from, it's um, 2.15, which is one of the Mac labs down there in G31. And then we're going to have a final professional development workshop afternoon in week eight. Um, now, it may not be on the Wednesday at the moment, we're just negotiating that, but it'll be sometime in week eight or the last couple of weeks of the course. Um, and there, there'll be the opportunity for you to actually present to teachers. So during the course, you're going to get to learn about lots of different technologies. And if you wish, you can t avail yourself of the opportunity to run a presentation with other students and on one of the topics that you've been learning about. More details about that to follow. So what are we going to be learning about? Here's the course content. Uh, this week we're introducing the course and looking at the concept of ICT integration. Next week there'll just be one text to look at, information and communication technologies. Week three, educational gaming and virtual worlds in education. Week four, robotics, automation, visual programming and digital storytelling. Now that week we don't have the um, discussion, whole course discussion, because we'll actually have the on-campus workshop that there we'll be doing robotics and automation and visual programming. So you've got to make sure you've read that so you can engage with the workshop. Week five, learning management systems and blended and online teaching. Week six, learning analytics and mobile learning technologies. Week seven, adaptive technologies and universal design for learning. Then in weeks eight, we're going to focus in on the Australian curriculum. Week nine, ICT leadership in schools. Week 10, we're going to have a particular focus on digital technologies for secondary teachers. It's a new subject that's, um, coming out in the Australian curriculum. In week 11, we're going to focus in on the ICT general capabilities for secondary teachers that you all need to be uh, integrating into all of your subject areas. And then in week 12, developing professional learning. So, we go for 12 weeks. Each week there'll be a video and some material. Now, on the course website, it only shows nine weeks. Of course, that's um, once I started putting in 10, 11, and 12, they all went to the beginning and it made it look very silly. So, um, as we get to those weeks, I'll add those additional links in to um, archive the, the lecture material. Okay, so that's the overview of the course. What's very important to all students is assessment. Now, do things a little bit differently in this course, as you may have already guessed, and we have two sorts of assessment. The first is an assessment of your effort. So, fairly untraditional at university level, but you're gonna create a log of learning activities that's based on completing tasks and quizzes and not determined by assessment criteria. So, I won't be making a judgment on the quality of what you've done, simply on whether or not you've done various things. Um, the second is an assessment of your capability. This is a portfolio of your learning, and it's based upon traditional performance evidence as measured against a set of criteria. Now, in the university's wisdom, in order to make things less stressful for you, as first-year students, they have decided to, that all first-year students need to do a um, assessment task um, by the end of week three. So, um, not quite sure that makes it less stressful or not, but in order to give you an idea of what assessment is like, there'll be an assessment item due. I'm a little bit kinder, I'll give you until Monday of week four. But basically you need to have it finished by the end of week three, polish it up over the weekend, and make sure it's submitted on Monday of week four. Now that forms part of your digital portfolio. Um, your digital portfolio will be of three items, and one item you'll do by Monday of week four, the other two items by Monday of week 13. 
so the Monday after we finish the course. Um, your log of learning activities has to be completed by Monday of week 11. Now that one you've got plenty of time for and most students get that finished by about week 6. Um, get it out of the way, but you've got to week 11 if you really need it, but the activities are designed to be completed as you go and um, they match the first, I think it's first six weeks of lectures. So the quizzes are all on the lectures and the, uh, well, let's get to those. Okay, so your log of learning activities. Okay, as I said, it's based upon your effort and it's made up of four quizzes. So they're online quizzes, each worth 5%, giving you 20% for that, and six completion activities, each worth 5%. Now you have to choose three completion activities from design and technology and three from digital technologies. I'll explain that again in a moment. Um, there are, however, a couple that can count for either. Um, but let's first look at the quizzes. So here are the quizzes. So the first one, two, well, the first um, probably eight or nine weeks of quizzes. Um, so they'll all be available, but you only do four of them. Now there will be an introductory one, a practice one, based upon this particular um, text. So you can get some um, practice and see what it's like before you actually do one of the quizzes for marks. But the other ones then do count. And there's a university guide to taking online quizzes. Of course, unfortunately, you have to be reasonably strict in terms of if you start a quiz and then you suddenly have to stop, um, well, too bad. You've, you're going to lose part of your time for that quiz. Or if you start it and something goes wrong um, with your computer, with your internet connection, for example, well, that's in some respects bad luck. Um, so please make sure you've done the practice, you're comfortable, you've made sure you've got plenty of water and don't have to go to the toilet, all that sort of stuff. Got a nice strong internet connection and take the quiz. They're fairly short, uh, generally about 10 minutes long, um, not too many questions. So, oh, other things, they're open book. So you can have all your course material ready and open and looking at it. It does rely upon a bit of honesty so you don't have other people helping you, etc. Um, there are a few techniques we can use to track that um, in terms of keystroke analysis and other things like that. Uh, at the moment though, we don't do video analysis where we have video cameras watching you and all that sort of thing, but um, we do rely upon a bit of honesty. But the quizzes aren't that hard, so you shouldn't really need to... Um, yes. Okay, the completion activities. Here you have six of these to do, and I think I've got about 20 for you to choose from, and I'll probably add a few more as we go through the course. Now, two of them can count for either digital um, for designer technology or digital technologies. Being on a panel for the whole course discussion, that can count as one of your activities, so one of your six activities. Um, you do have to participate in at least four sessions um, as a panel member and contribute some facts, um, answer some questions, etc. But that's a nice easy way of completing one of the completion activities. Another one is attending the professional development workshop day. Attend that, uh, post some questions to the discussion forum um, that we saw before in Linear Griffith, post some comments that other students have commented about, uh, post a photo and a comment about that photo. And that's another one done. So two Quite simple, easy completion activities to do. Then you've got other activities. So the first one here is an emerging education technology poster. What you need to do is create a poster based upon an emerging technology selected from an Horizon report. And we'll be talking about that during our course. A um, few little things to make sure you include, but again, a nice, easy task to complete. Create an infographic. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, you'll find about that as we go through the course. Um, a location-based learning activity, um, so identifying an, an, a mobile app that will go on an iPad or an iPhone or something like that. Um, a website that supports it and describe how it could be used in education. Joining the Learning Place. This is the learning management system used by Education Queensland. Um, you can get registration for that. I think it costs you about $30. Um, and you can get forms for that at the front office on level 3. But particularly if you're going out on a practicum to an Education Queensland school, it's very useful to be familiar with the learning place. We'll be discussing it when we get to that particular module on learning management systems during the course. 
But again, it's a nice, easy way of completing an activity. Run your own Hangout online, Google Plus Hangout, with five students. So it might be to discuss um, some of the readings in a impromptu um, study group. Create a digital presentation using SlideShare, SlideRocket, uh, or Prezi. Again, many of you would have used something similar to that as before. You do have to embed a video and stuff to get the full marks for it, but that's easy enough to do. Now with the marks, you get basically 1% for each of them. Um, if you only do three of the things and leave two out, then you'll still get 3%. Um, analyze a game and identify its educational benefits. Uh, create a photo tour. Create an augmented reality storybook. Again, there'll be course modules on each of these. Create a voice thread or Animoto story. So there are a series of different activities that you can do for your log of learning activities. Nice, simple little activities. They just need to be completed. You upload them onto Learning at Griffith um, and normally attach either a link to the thing you've created or a YouTube video or whatever is involved. Um, but I'll explain more about that a little bit later. Then there's your portfolio, portfolio of learning. Now here, there's three tasks involved for your portfolio. It's the two of them are due in week 13, but one is due in week four. And the one due in week four, I'm specifying for you so that you're all doing the same one. So, the one you're going to complete in week four is a digital portfolio template. So this is like a, web, a website, um, but we, we call it an e-portfolio or a digital portfolio. We're going to be using Google Sites to create that. And the idea is though that in a full digital portfolio, you would have all the details about yourself and about your teaching and about what you've done on PRAC, all your assignments, all those sort of aspects put in there. You don't need to do that. You don't need to include all your examples of your work, etc. What you're doing is you're going to be creating the shell that could be populated by all that material. So, a few things you have to complete, well, quite a few things for that one. There's a whole list of little activities that you can include in it. Of course, this is your, one of your main items. I have to make it fairly difficult, um, but it's still really just a series of things you you do or you don't do. Um, but some of them are a little bit tricky, so it'll involve doing some research and finding out, out how to do them. But there's lots of online guides and Google videos and so forth on how to do all of the activities that you'll be asked to do. First thing is create a website in Google Sites, personalize it, changing its colors and fonts, etc., or using a template to do that. Has to include at least three pages, including an introductory page that has a navigation tool on it, um, etc. Um, got to have some headings and subheadings. On each page, there should be a table of contents. Uh, by the way, this website, or my course website, uses Google Sites as well, so you can see roughly what's involved. Include some links to other websites. Include at least one image, and you need to have permission to use the image. So we're going to do a little bit on how to find um, images that you can use that aren't copyright. Including a link to another website. Um, in an image, so having it when you click on the picture, it goes to another website. Uploading a document or a file, such as a PDF document, that can be accessed so people can click on a link or click on the document that's been uploaded and then download it. Creating a short video, introducing yourself, editing it, making it available on YouTube and embedding that on your website. Putting a form, so a question or a little quiz in, created in Google's forms which is a spreadsheet form, and embedding that onto your website. Uh, creating a calendar, putting at least three events in the calendar, and embedding that on your website. Um, creating a Google Doc, embedding that on your website. Now again, there's oodles of um, instructional and tutorial material on all of these activities, and the library also runs a special tutorial on, all of the, on most of these activities. Creating a short presentation in PowerPoint or Keynote, or Google, Google, Google Slides, or SlideShare, or SlideRocket, or Prezi, and embedding that on your website. Modifying or creating an image that reflects your interest in educational technologies, and using that as a banner across the top of your site. Uh, creating a blog, 
and embedding that, well, putting some site, uh, posts on it and embedding that as an RSS stream onto your website. Um, having one web page which isn't accessible by anyone except yourself and setting the, the permissions for that so that only you can access that. Um, that's what we're saying there. And I think that's it. So, there's a little bit more to read there about that and the criteria for these will be coming. So that's the one you have to do. And you have to do that by the end of week three. Most students, if they're familiar with computers and with Google Docs, could probably do most of that in less than an hour. Um, if you've got to go away and research and find out how to do some of these things, it may take you a couple of hours. But it's not particularly difficult. Okay, now you've got two other um, activities to do that you can choose from the remaining options. One is, as I mentioned before, in the, I think it's week nine or something, um, you've got a choice of going to a professional development session and presenting on a topic. And that will count as one of your um, portfolio of learning activities. Okay, you have to, um, or you can also do it as an online webinar. But basically it's a 10 minute presentation, 10 or seven minute presentation if it's online. You can do a TPAC analysis. And again, as you do the readings, you'll find out more about how to do that. You can do a SAMA series. And again, that will make more sense when you've done the readings. You could write an article for publication in one of the educational journals. Okay, a short article of up to 700 words about some aspect of ICT education. You can create an online test, similar to the ones that you'll be doing during this course, but you can create your own and show how you've done that, and that can count as an activity. You can do a student data analysis, um, similar to what we use for NAPLAN, um, and show how that can be done. Um, you can write an argument for or against one-to-one -one or BYOD in schools. So if you like writing argumentative essays, you can do that. You can create your own educational app for use on an, um, an, an iPad or an I, iBook or something like that. Um, you can write an essay describing the developments in MOOCs. Okay, it's another essay um, task. You can set up your own learning management system. Uh, you can create a video tutorial on a topic. You can create your own digital book, similar to the ones we've been using in this course. Um, you can look at a computer game, such as Minecraft or Portal, and describe how that can be used educationally. You can create your own computer game. You can create your own QR code, or quick um, response code, um, which is an augmented reality activity. You can create your own augmented reality site-based educational activity. And again, these will make sense when you've actually done the readings and the modules for those topics. You can create a machine a tour of a computer game or a virtual world, or you can create your own virtual world. Um, you can create a robotics um, activity called a camp on a disc, or you can use a kit an electronic kit to create your own um, electronic solution. Uh, you can create an animated story or clay animation, or you can create an educational um, program, such as um, one for learning foreign languages with flashcards or something, but as a, it needs to show some programming skills. So there are all the different ones you can choose from. You only get to choose two. I choose one for you. Um, and from all those others, you choose two of those and complete those for your portfolio. So lots of choice. Um, hopefully there's something in there that will interest you, or at least you can suffer through and uh, um, can get good marks for. Finally, there's a weekly to-do guide where I just provide an overview of the things that you should make sure you're doing each week. Of course, you've got your calendar back on the Learning at Griffith website, but this goes through and just summarizes things. And for each of the weeks, there's a little bit more detail provided there for you. So that's the course web pages and a brief introduction to the course. Uh, I'll just go back to the web page for a moment. So I hope to see everyone 10 a.m. on Wednesday, and at least nine of you have signed up for the whole course discussion group. Otherwise, some of you will receive some emails requesting your participation. Uh, but I'm hopeful that you'll 
um, volunteer to the various sessions. Of course, it's a really good way of actually getting a piece of assessment out of the way. Other than that, the rest of you will be online and seeing you there. And can you please complete your introductions back on the student introduction forum on learning at Griffith? So I know who I'll be speaking to and know a little bit about yourselves. If you want to find out more about me, you can just go to jason.zagami.info or if you're back on the course website, just click on Zagami Zeitgeist there or Dr. Zagami and there's plenty of information about myself um, if you want to find out more about your lecturer. So I'm looking forward to meeting everyone online on Wednesday and answering your questions as we have an interesting discussion about our course introduction that we've gone through and of course your next reading module, ICT Integration. See you then.